What's up, guys? I'm an elder millennial who still thinks that saying what's up, guys is a relevant way to make fun of YouTube culture. Roll the intro. YouTube exclusive content. So today on the program, we're going to be little detectives. We're going to be little sleuthy boys and girls and non-binary children. We're going to put our detective caps on and we're going to solve a mystery together. Because there has been a murder. And what I mean when I say that is that there it's not a murder, but it's a um more like a misunderstanding or a miscommunication that took place last week just like in the comments of some of my videos, which is I know that that's not the same thing at all as a murder. So it's just, it's not, it's not a murder. There has, there hasn't been a murder. But there was this massive miscommunication that took up several days of my life in the comments of these videos that I made. And we're going to just, we're going to talk about that. We're going to get into that. So it all started when I made a video that went like this. Why do men not understand hints? Why do I have to spell every fucking thing out? So I don't normally respond to videos like this, but when I saw this video, it had close to 700,000 likes, probably has more by now, and it caught my eye. Because what that seems to be saying is that close to a million people who are romantically interested in men saw that video and were like, yeah, yes, exactly, this agree, like, hit the like button on that. And I honestly don't know anything about this content creator. She seems young, younger than myself, that is. So I don't know, I thought maybe I could put my wholesome elder millennial dad hat on and see if we can try and parse this out and find an answer to this question together. If I had to offer an unqualified psychoanalytic guess as to why 700,000 people agreed with that video, I guess it's most likely tied to some kind of possibly naive, youthful romanticism. The idea that it would be so great if the person you have a crush on could just understand you perfectly without you having to spell everything out explicitly. You could just shoot them a subtle look and they would understand exactly what you mean with that subtle look. And I honestly get how that sounds romantic. The idea that this person would just know you so well, so thoroughly inside and out. Now as to the answer to the question, why can't men just understand hints? Well, I certainly can't speak for all men. I can only speak for myself. But what I can tell you is that the reason why I am not particularly interested in trying to become a master interpreter in the language of hints is because all of the women in my life, the women I've dated, the women I'm friends with, the women on my phone, the women on TV, are telling me that they're having an experience with men that is not wholly positive. Men can be really scary. Men have behaved in violent ways toward them. Men have made them feel uncomfortable and unsafe. Men have violated their boundaries and their sense of personal agency. I hear these things and I believe the women who are telling me these things. And the last thing I want to do as a man is add to that negative experience. And so I prefer, or rather I require, direct, clear communication in order for me to feel comfortable moving forward in a particular direction or pursuing someone in a particular way. And the last thing I would want is to make a move on someone because I think I'm interpreting a hint accurately only to find out that I was not interpreting that hint accurately and I have just made this person feel massively uncomfortable or unsafe. Also consent is really sexy and cool and I'm not sure if you can have enthusiastic clear consent without clear direct communication so I genuinely hope that helps to answer the question. So yeah I felt like that was a pretty 
decent video. I felt like what I was saying there was pretty fair and reasonable and clearly communicated. And you know, when I posted the video to TikTok, it went pretty well. I felt like it was pretty well received over there. But then the next day, I posted the video to Instagram because that's that's what I do. I post to TikTok first, and then it goes to Instagram, and then it goes to YouTube. But don't be offended, YouTube. Don't feel like you're the end of the line, like you're the last to get the content. If anything, you get the most complete version of the content because you get all this stuff. They don't get this stuff over on those other platforms. They just get the they just get the rectangle one, but they don't get all this. And that's because the cold hard truth of it is I love you the most. I value our relationship the most and I seek to nurture this relationship the most. But anyway, I took that video over to Instagram hoping for a similar reception to the one I had been receiving over on TikTok. And you know, I, I'd say that maybe like 70, maybe 65% of the comments over on Instagram were favorable, but there were genuinely enough people in those comments who seemed really pressed about the video and like really mad at me for some reason that it caught my attention. One person in those comments even called me an incel for the video. They said that that video that I just showed you was me behaving like an incel. A video where I'm talking about how I will not pursue intimate romantic relations with a lady unless I have received clear, affirmative, enthusiastic consent. And I could be wrong here, correct me in the comments if I am, but my understanding of the word incel is that the cell suffix stood for celibate, as in a person who does not participate in intimate romantic relations. And the prefix in was a stand-in for the word involuntary or involuntarily, as in this is a person who is involuntarily celibate. They are celibate against their will. And that's because no one will hook up with them, which usually has something to do with them being generally awful to women and having a very low regard for concepts like the process of obtaining enthusiastic affirmative consent. And you know, I could have gotten upset. I could have gotten really righteously indignant and angry about the fact that I was being mischaracterized in such a crude and offensive way. But instead, I decided to get curious. I decided to put my detective cap on and try to figure out what must have gone wrong, where the wires got crossed that led to this miscommunication. And after a few hours of some of my very best detective work, I believe I made a discovery that cracked the whole case wide open. I recently had a pretty big miscommunication in the comments section for one of my videos that was ironically about communication. Can you even believe? Everyone, please stay in your seats, remain calm. I know the news of a miscommunication occurring in the comments section of a video on the internet is shocking and unprecedented, but I think we can get through it together. I felt like it was pretty clear in the language of my video that what I was talking about was the process of obtaining clear, enthusiastic, affirmative consent. For me, I require clear, direct communication in order to feel comfortable moving forward or pursuing someone in a romantic way. Another way of saying that is, I assume consent has not been given unless it has been given in a direct, clear, enthusiastic way. Another way of phrasing that is, for me, anything other than a direct, clear, enthusiastic yes is essentially a no. So imagine my surprise when I posted the video to find that somewhere in the process of the words leaving my mouth and traveling through the filter of another person's subjective lens, somehow the interpretation of what I was saying was being received as the exact opposite of 
what I was saying. I had lots of comments from people saying things like this. I watched this again and it just reads as women please be more clear so I don't add to the existing violence towards women and that consent can only exist with a clear no. Another way of phrasing that is that what this person heard when they watched my video was me saying that it is the responsibility of women to communicate clearly if they don't want to feel unsafe or be assaulted. Another way of phrasing that is that what these people heard when they watched my video is me saying men should not stop or I will not stop unless I hear a clear definitive no. And anything other than a clear definitive no does not qualify as adequate consent. And that's just fascinating because as I've already pointed out, that's kind of the exact polar opposite of what I actually said. I didn't say, I don't feel comfortable stopping unless I hear a definitive, clear no. I said, I don't feel comfortable pursuing unless I hear a clear, definitive, enthusiastic yes. One suggests that anything other than a clear, definitive no equals a yes, and the other suggests that anything other than a clear definitive yes equals a no. So it's abundantly clear at this point that a miscommunication has taken place. The question is, what is the source of that miscommunication? It turns out that how people felt about my response video was influenced directly by what they assumed the original video meant when it talked about hints. HINTS! People had lots of different interpretations of what that could mean. Some people felt very strongly that what she was talking about was the concept of weaponized incompetence. Some people felt like what she meant when she was talking about men not understanding hints is the frustrating and often very scary process of dealing with a man who is not responsive to your hints that you do not want him to be showing you attention or pursuing you in some kind of flirtatious or romantic way. Me, as a single man in the dating world, interpreted the video as meaning men don't understand my hints about wanting them to flirt with me or pursue me more. I'm trying to give hints about wanting them to ask me out on a date and they don't understand it and I wish I didn't have to spell it out. And the reality is we were all just making assumptions about what she meant when she was saying, why don't men understand hints? None of us actually know what she meant by that because she didn't actually say what she meant by that. So I was just responding to my assumed interpretation of her video. And my assumed interpretation of her video happened to be different from your assumed interpretation of her video. And that simple fact made it almost impossible for us to communicate effectively. Which is wild because in reality, neither one of us ever knew what the actual interpretation of her video was because she never actually said what it was. She only hinted at it. Hints! This was actually solving two mysteries for me. It was solving the mystery of why so many people seemed to be having such a hard time hearing and synthesizing and understanding the clear language in my response video, but it was also solving the mystery of why that original video was so popular in the first place. You see, I think that her video was so massively popular with so many people, not in spite of the fact that her message was delivered rather vaguely with no overt clarifications about what specifically she was referring to when she said hints. I think her video was so massively popular with so many different people because the message was delivered in such a vague way with no overt clarifications on what she was talking about specifically when she said hints. Every single person who watches her video instinctively assigns that video whatever interpretation is most immediately emotionally resonant for them. So there it is. Mystery solved, right? We did it. Case closed. Elementary, my dear Holmes. Elementary. Actually, big, major, huge plot twist. There are still a whole bunch of people in the comments of my second video who are just like,
not ready to move on from the miscommunication and the misunderstandings. Remember the plot twists that I was doing from from before in the Argyle video? Remember those? I thought it would be fun if I uh, did one, if I get if a, if I brought it in f uh, for uh, for for this time, on on this one. But yeah, we all have more detective work to do, apparently. So we're going to look at some of the comments from the second video. These are comments that were made after I thought the mystery had already been solved. I understand your point and mean this with respect. Nearly every woman understood immediately what she meant. I understand your comment and I mean this with respect, but that's just factually incorrect. That's just wrong. And you don't actually have any data to support why you're making this comment. You're literally just assuming that almost all women naturally got the same interpretation from the video that you did. But I actually have a significant amount of data on this. And that's why I feel like I can say pretty definitively that what you're saying here is just incorrect. You're just wrong. My audience is mostly made up of women, and there absolutely was not a consensus from the women in my audience in my comments section about what they thought she meant in that original video. I think people are hearing you clearly, but have a contention with your interpretation being a minority experience. So many women commented on the original you stitched because of all the other reasons you acknowledged but don't center. You are naturally centering your interpretation from your male POV, and it feels to others like you're missing the main issue. Again, this is a comment responding to my second video. In that video, I'm already acknowledging that I think one of the core contributors to our inability to communicate effectively and hear each other properly is our different assumed interpretations of the original video. Inherent in that acknowledgement is an acknowledgement that my assumed interpretation of that video was just as potentially incorrect as anyone else's assumed interpretation. There's no way for any of us to know whether my assumed interpretation is correct or incorrect, but my assumed interpretation of that video is just as potentially incorrect as anyone else's assumed interpretation of that video is. And your reasoning here as to why my assumed interpretation might be more likely to be incorrect than your assumed interpretation tracks for me. I can fully see where you're getting that and I can honor and acknowledge the point that you're making there. However, this first point you're making about my interpretation being representative of a minority experience. I've got two major problems there. The first is, even if my interpretation of that video is representative of a minority experience, that should not automatically invalidate my assumed interpretation of her video, and it shouldn't automatically invalidate everything that I said in both of my response videos to her original video. And that's my problem with your point if my experience is indeed the minority experience. But I'm not sure that my experience with that video is even the minority experience. There were actually way, way, way more people in my comments who understood what I was saying in both videos and agreed with what I was saying. The vast majority of people who watched both of my videos had no problem understanding them and were totally fine with the message in both of them. Love you, mate, but it was super obvious what she was talking about in her first video, even though she didn't spell it out. You are one of the only people I followed on here and on YouTube after finding you on TikTok. So I mean it when I say I really enjoy your content, but hey, everyone misses the mark once in a million. So yeah, you know, thank you for being so respectful and nice in your comment. But again, you're just factually incorrect here. When you say that it was just super obvious to everyone but me what she meant in her original video, you're just not correct. That's that, 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 that's, that, that's the whole thing. That's the whole reason why we're doing this. It's because we do not have a consensus. We do not agree on what her original video meant. It's specifically because her message was not clear. And again, this isn't just like my opinion. There is very, very clear data 
on this. It's just simply factually incorrect to say that what she said in her original video was very clear and understood by everyone but me. So we're kind of back to square one here, right? Like, how is this still happening? We had the miscommunication and the misunderstanding on the first video. Instead of getting upset or offended, I got curious, I put on my detective hat, and I figured out why that might be happening. I found that the source of it might be our differing interpretations of the original Hints video. And that should have solved the problem, but instead we had a bunch of people on the second video just doubling down and saying, no, my interpretation of the original video is the correct interpretation. You, Austin, you may have incorrectly assumed what she meant in her original video, but I did not incorrectly assume what she meant in the original video. I knew exactly what she meant. And so did everyone else. Everybody else agrees with me. We all knew what she meant. So now we have a whole new mystery to solve. Why is it that these people can't accept a pretty easy thing to accept? Just the clear and plain fact that they obviously have no real way of knowing specifically and definitively what that woman was talking about when she said the word hints. Hints! 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 hints. It's just factually impossible. She does not specifically say what she is specifically referring to. So no matter how certain you are that you know what she's referring to, you can't actually definitively know. So the mystery is why? Why are people so certain they know this unknowable thing? Why are they unwilling to let go of that? So, you know, instead of getting frustrated and rage quitting the internet, I decided to get curious again, put my detective hat back on again and go to work trying to figure this one out. And there are a few things here that I think could work as a functioning answer to this riddle. The first is that I started to examine how people were arriving at their assumed interpretations of the original Hints video. What I found was that a lot of these people felt very strongly that they had indisputable, hard evidence that supported and validated their assumed interpretations. So a lot of the people who were convinced that the original video was about weaponized incompetence would reference the full clip. They would make these comments that made it seem like I was deliberately cutting off the back end of her original clip so that I could make it seem like she was saying something she wasn't. And that's because in the full clip, she says this. Why do men not understand hints? Why do I have to spell every fucking thing out? Why can't you just one simple little uh, hinting at this? Fucking understand what I'm trying to say. I don't want to have to spell everything out like I'm your mother. So that last line right there, I don't want to have to spell everything out like I'm your mother. They felt like that was the smoking gun. That was the proof that what she was talking about was weaponized incompetence. She's talking about being frustrated that her partner won't do his share of the household chores. Now, all of the people who were convinced that the actual interpretation of the video is that she is saying she wants men to respect her hints to leave her alone, that she's frustrated that men are pursuing her too aggressively and she wants them to get the hint that she wants her them to back off, they also felt, and I assume feel very strongly, that they have smoking gun evidence in that original video that supports their assumed interpretation of it. And what all of them point to is her anger, her very visible frustration. These people feel like the only reasonable and possible explanation for her being this visibly angry in her video is that she is mad that men are pursuing her in a way that she does not want them to. Now, I had another friend recently reach out to me over private message and say, I think that your interpretation, Austin, is actually the correct one, and we can see it really clearly with her body language when she does this. Why can't you just one simple little <laughs> This friend was suggesting to me that what she was very clearly signaling right there is 
the frustration of trying to flirt and give hints through flirtation. So all of these people really feel like they've done their homework. They feel like they are interpreting the video correctly, and they feel like the evidence of that is in the video. And yet, they're all still coming up with decidedly different interpretations. And that's because the smoking gun evidence that they think they're seeing in the video isn't actually smoking gun evidence at all. All they're really doing is sort of engaging in a reverse engineered form of confirmation bias, but she's still not saying at any point in this video specifically what she actually means. <laughs> And the final contributor to all of this miscommunication and misunderstanding that I want to talk about here, the final thing that I think I want to explore here is the concept of optics. For a lot of the women in my comments who are unwilling to undig their heels, I think it really just comes back to the optics of what's happening in both of my videos in the abstract. And what's happening in those videos is that a woman is upset about something and a straight, white, cisgender man is responding to her in a way that feels explanatory or potentially mansplainy. Now that's not actually an accurate depiction of what I was doing. I wasn't responding to this woman to explain to her why she's wrong or why her feelings are invalid. She asked a question, why don't men understand hints? And I attempted to answer her question. And again, I was very, very careful to say I'm only only answering your question as it pertains to me. I'm only speaking for myself. I'm not actually speaking for men. I certainly can't speak for all men. I can only speak for myself. But I think for a lot of these people, it doesn't actually matter what my specific words were actually saying. For them, the only thing that really mattered was the optics. And the basic abstract optics of someone like me responding to someone like her just immediately didn't feel good. Even this guy here who tells me what a huge fan of mine he is, but goes on to say like, come on dude, can't you just admit that you're wrong? I think that what doesn't sit right for this guy is the optics. I think that optically what he's seeing in the abstract is a content creator like me with a platform just refusing to acknowledge that I'm wrong. And it doesn't actually matter to him whether or not I am wrong. He just doesn't like the way it looks. It's just an obnoxious image for him. It would just sit better for him as a fan of mine if I would just acknowledge that I get things wrong every once in a while. And like, you know, if that guy is watching this video, hey, if it helps you, I get things wrong all the time. I'm wrong about stuff just so often. I'm wrong about things like more often than I'm right about things. I'm just, I'm just wrong all the time. And as I've already stated earlier in this video, my big mistake in this whole debacle was that I too was making an instinctive, emotionally informed assumption about what that original hints video meant. That was my mistake. That was a mistake that I made that contributed to all of this. So if it helps you to hear me acknowledge that, there it is. There's me acknowledging that. And if it helps the women in my comments who just don't like the optics of me explaining things to women, well then, uh, I, I guess I just, I don't think, I don't think you're gonna like anything about this entire video. I just, I think, I think, I think you probably just shouldn't have watched any of this. So yeah, that's kind of all of it. I'm not sure if we can say mystery solved necessarily or case closed, but that's 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 more or less uh, the end of it. I don't I don't really want to talk about it any more than this. What does it all mean? I don't know. Uh, that communication is fucking hard. <laughs> it's it's really hard to be perfectly understood by everyone all the time. In fact, I would even venture to say that it's impossible. It's just not it's not a thing. It's not possible. It's not a thing that you can hope to achieve. But yeah, I hope that was fun. I hope that was informative. I hope that was interesting. I hope that was intellectually stimulating in some way. If it was, if you had a good time with this video, you know, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Go check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Austin Archer. Maybe pick up my record. 
beautiful things, the deluxe edition, uh, on a limited edition double vinyl over at my band camp. All of that's linked in the thing. You know it is, okay? All right? And just try to, you know, like, I don't know. Just, like, just, just, like... Try to be be cool out there. Be cool and and uh, and keep on keeping on. And you know, don't don't listen to, to the haters. Block them out. Block out the haters. And um, you know, reach for the stars and your dreams and all the. I hope I hope everything. I hope everything. Also, I think we learned that Austin just needs to stay out of the comments. I think that that's the big lesson of today's episode that we all learned is Austin needs to stay his white ass out of the comments.